Hello, and welcome to the Dastardly Banana Spawn Controller Package. This video should give you a brief overview of the package, which allows you to easily configure and change the way enemies spawn in your game. As you can see here, I've set up a very basic scene to begin with. All it is is a platform, a light, a camera, and a little capsule that I've tagged as player. And the reason I've done that is because the enemies that come with the demo scene will chase whatever is called player. So let's actually import the package. You can also do this by double clicking the package, but I'm just going to select it this way. DB Spawn Controller version 1.0, and we're going to import everything. Now what's going to happen is two new folders are going to appear in your project hierarchy. One is an editor folder for editor scripts if you don't already have one, and the other, Spawner DB, contains everything you'll need to work with. Um, the main things you'll worry about, though, are already at the top level. This is demo scene assets, and this is additional scripts that you won't need to edit, although if you can, if you, you can if you wish. Um, all you need to do to set up the package and begin working with it is drag in this spawn controller prefab anywhere into your game world. Um, and then it'll create at least one spawner by dragging in its prefab as well. The spawn controller is the brains. This is where you'll be editing everything in this custom inspector here. Spawners are simply points in the game world that you might want things to spawn. So let's create two spawners and name them. You should always name your spawners. It makes them easy to keep track of. So I'm going to name mine left and right because of where they are relative to the camera. And I'm also going to create an empty game object to use as a little folder, um, which is a good tip for everything, not just the spawn system. So I'm going to name this spawners and drag these in as children, just so now there's less clutter in my hierarchy. It has worked well, especially if you have a lot of spawners. And believe it or not, you're actually already configured. Um, if you look here at the spawn controller as inspector, you'll see a few options. And actually, we get a lot more options the moment we create our first wave by pushing Add Wave. So you can see here there's a drop-down. Right now, there's only one wave. Let me add one more, or two more by accident. Um, and you can see that you can select which wave you're currently editing. Um, everything below this point is specific to the wave you're looking at. So I could change this objective to be a timed wave, and this one would still be a kill wave. Um, and basically, these are different ways to determine how the wave ends. A timed wave ends after a certain amount of time. A kill wave ends when you've killed everything in the wave. Triggered are triggered by messages you send in scripting. So let's just leave this as timed for now and let's give it a length of 15 seconds. Um, these other uh, options, and there's a lot of them, we tried to make it as customizable as possible, are all uh, in the documentation. So if you're wondering what any of these things do, um, your documentation should have a detailed explanation of every option. One thing you'll notice if you look down here is that there are actually two little foldouts with the names of our spawners that we've created. And in fact, if we were to create another spawner right now, let's drag in a new spawner, name it Center. Let's put it in spawners just for consistency's sake. You'll see that this spawner now has its own dropdown. Um, in each spawner, you can configure a lot about how things work. You can configure whether it you know, spawns things every certain number of seconds, only when you trigger things, the moment the last thing died, um, as well as a few other options. So let's go and make something spawn. Um, this is very easy to do. All you need to do is drag in your enemy to this enemy field. I'm going to use some of these enemies from the demo scene. All they are are little cubes with textures that move towards the player, but they'll work for this. So I drag my red enemy into the enemy field, and there it is. And if I want another enemy, I drag it into the newly appeared blank one. So now a red and a blue enemy will spawn. Let's say I wanted multiple red enemies to spawn in a row. Rather than dragging them in, I can simply use this repeat option. So now five red enemies will spawn before one blue enemy spawns. So let's go and see if this works. Oops, and I forgot to do something. There's a time before the first wave that you can edit, among many other options, and 10 seconds is a little long for this, so let's make it zero. And here it is, five red, one blue. And once again, all these options are specific to the wave, so the moment I go to wave 2, it's blank again. But I can go back to wave 1, and there it is. By the way, if you're scared of having these delete buttons around and accidentally deleting something, don't worry, you can lock them, make the buttons go away until you're sure you're going to use them. So let's go back to wave 1. And that's actually the, the basics um, of the spawn control system. There's a great deal of depth and customization. As you can see, there are a lot of options. Um, for every type. There are lots of options that appear only in certain conditions. Um, so um, you can change single and triggered, for example, and that makes new options appear. 
Um, and the way these all these different options interact can give you very unique and exciting waves, especially because you can make each spawner behave completely differently than any others. There's one more really important thing though before you start using the package, um, and this is in the documentation as well. Um, let's take a look at a script here that kills our enemies. The demo scene enemies can be killed by being clicked on, and then there's another script that sends the, each enemy this message clicked and runs this function. And as you can see here, when this enemy is clicked, before we destroy it, we call this function die on it. Um, so whenever you kill an enemy, you need to call the function die. That's so in things like kill waves, where the wave doesn't end until everything has been killed, the spawner can keep track of who's actually alive and who's dead. Um, and that's it. Um, we hope you enjoyed this little video. Um, thank you.